We'll see. Number four and going to the playoff to face Clemson will be the Alabama Crimson Tide. <laughs> week we started the show off playing the war eagle fight song this week what a difference a week makes well let me just say i hope that the end result is not the same thing as we saw after the auburn fight song right as we're looking now at the alabama fight song any surprises coming out of that did you expect auburn to beat georgia are you kidding me after what i saw the demolish the first go around right. i didn't think kirby's done a good job but I thought that team was still too young. I thought, oh, but let me tell you something. Auburn was beat down. They were physically tired. Gus must have really worked them hard this week. And then he puts in an injured running back in, in Kerryon Johnson. And, you know, he can't hold the ball. He dropped it on the ground a couple right. of times. And, you know, I think, uh, I guess the right team won the ball game. They certainly played the best. And I really think the committee overall, Jerry, has got the right four teams in there. I'll be honest with you. Well, a lot that, of people around the country don't believe that, but I do. Right. Well, of course, the Ohio State folks are the jumping up and down. But you know what? Hey, you look at Alabama's resume, how do you argue with Well, that? you can't. I mean, you, they didn't lose two and lose one of them by 31 points that's either. Right. And that's what Ohio State did. That's so, right. You know, I, I think it's I think it's going to be interesting. And uh, of all the luck of the draw, Alabama gets to go to New Orleans, which is their second home t field. And if they win, they get to go to Atlanta. I mean, that, look, you could not have anything else as far as home field advantage. Well, I'm just going to say it right now. As you said this year, Alabama's going to be your national champion. I think they are. They, they As so. soon as they were not, announced, the line went up, and they, they're favored over every team they play. So I can't wait. I think it's going to be really a good all year. All right, we got a great show today. You know, all of you that's watched us all year long, you know that we've only had one guest all year. That was the very first show. Lynn Scarborough with Lindy's Magazine right. gave us a national report. We're going to have our second guest today, and Max and I are both excited, Mr. Don Staley of the Tuscaloosa Sport and Tourism uh, Committee Board, whatever it is down there in Tuscaloosa. But you know what? We're going to be talking Super 7 because that's where the Super 7 is going to be played this year in Tuscaloosa at Bryant-Denny, and we got a lot of high school stuff to cover. We really do, and here's the only thing that bothered me a little bit about Alabama. Coach Saban may want that field to practice on. So, I mean, I hate to say this, but the Super 7 might have been moved to Legion Field. Oh, that's not you know? going to happen. <laughs> hey. Uh, we got three happy people for sure this this week. I wanted to get this in. Happiest people in Alabama. Yep. Has to be Nick Saban. This one. All right. Has to be Don Staley. Has to be in. All right. And our producer, Philip Pritchard, because yeah. he gets to play the Alabama <laughs> fight song. Well, start you know, I think we're going to have to add one more because I believe Gus Malzahn got a little raise oh, yeah. along the way. Seven so, years. you know, how about that? You know, okay. I, you know, I, of all things, we've talked about this before. You know, it. I spent so many years on the field. I got out way too soon. Way too soon. <laughs> I mean, Jimbo Fisher gets $75 million to go to Texas A&M. How do you like that? State of Florida State, Max. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Don Staley's going to join us. We've got high school stuff. We've got college stuff. we got a packed show. Uh, for Coach Max Howell, I'm Jerry Young. Thanks for watching Game Day TV. We'll take a break. We'll come back right after this. The unexpected. The inevitable. The inconvenient. Life can be difficult. Make it a little easier. Alpha Insurance. At Central State Bank, we are more than your local branch. Our digital lobby offers you the same great service you receive at our local offices, all from the convenience of your phone or home. Use mobile deposit, online banking, mobile wallet, and more. It is easy, convenient, and secure. Come by and see your personal banker or find out more at centralstatebank.com. This is just another way Central State Bank is large enough to serve you and small enough to know you.
Make your vehicle a rolling billboard or a one of a kind by changing the entire color by adding a high quality vehicle wrap. Sundown Vehicle Wraps is the premier vehicle wrap company in central Alabama. Our extensive knowledge makes us the leader in vehicle advertising. Whether you're a small business looking to increase revenue or a stabilized company looking for guaranteed visibility for your company. From design to installation, our team delivers with innovative graphics that are guaranteed to turn heads at an affordable price. Visit us on the web to start your next vehicle wrap project. Hello, everyone. Welcome back into Game Day TV. Well, I told you earlier that we just don't have guests on the show, mainly because Max doesn't like a lot of people. And they don't like They don't him. like me. That's what it is. But, hey, we got a guest this, this week, and we're so happy to have him. Don Staley with uh, uh, Tuscaloosa Tourism and Sport. Big time of year, Super 7 coming your way. A lot of things happening in Tuscaloosa. Well, guys, first of all, thanks a lot for having me on the show, and uh, there's no question about it. We are very excited to host again. Uh, this will be the fourth time for Tuscaloosa hosting this fantastic event. It started in uh, 2009 right. uh, when it left Legion Field and came to Tuscaloosa. So uh, staff is excited. The city is. And obviously with a little announcement that was made yesterday, there's right. a little bounce in the step again. How about that? Well, I know I, I said that you were one of the happiest people, but Tuscaloosa benefits from Alabama being put in there. Everybody knows that. And there's folks that will come to town. But it's more than – past Bryant Denny. What you have in Tuscaloosa is a whole downtown, a whole development area that's really booming. Well, thanks a lot for mentioning that. I appreciate that. Uh, we uh, we look at this event is not just the ball games themselves, which are very, very important, but it's an opportunity for us to show off as a city. Auburn does the same thing when they host. It's a way to roll out the red carpet, let folks see what Tuscaloosa is all about. You know, you've got that revitalized downtown area, beautiful amphitheater right there on the river, right. and there's just so much that's going on right now since the hurricane or since the the tornado, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the town has taken on a whole new look, and I tell you what, we're excited to uh, have everybody coming in starting tomorrow night with the high school association staff for the dinner, and then everything starts up uh, on Wednesday. Right, you know, Max is uh, working for Raycom this year. He's doing the color analyst for the Super Seven Championship. Several games in there, Max. I know you got to be excited to go to Tuscaloosa. You got a suite down there, I understand? Well, right? yeah, I, all I do. So I go way back. My, my dad's first cousin was Dixie Howell. So we go back with that relationship, and they like to dis, uh, really disown me when I signed with Auburn coming out of high school. But that's another story for another day. Right. But my point is, my, my family, my dad's family is from Pickens County. So I've been in and out of Tuscaloosa all my life. Just a stone's have, throw. I never have to go through Tuscaloosa to get uh, to my grandparents' house. But it is, and I've seen the growth of Tuscaloosa for years. And I, I think without a doubt with the Super 7 now, there'll be 14 teams coming in with all the supporters. And then an announcement that we talked about for yesterday, the brand that the University of Alabama's built. And, and, of course, I think so many people forget, Don, that, you know, that was the University of Alabama before Coach Saban. You know, Absolutely. and all this was, you know, disrespect <clears throat> to him because he's magnified that, I think. But the fact is that Tuscaloosa has been on the map for many years. It has. And, and you know, when you look back in the day, I'm, I'm 58 years old, and I'm originally from Pittsburgh, but we knew about the brand back then because of Coach Bryant. Sure. And when I took over coaching at Alabama, started that soccer program there, uh, those kids that we recruited, although you know they did have to, 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 to be educated that we're actually in Tuscaloosa and not Birmingham, yeah, right. I tell you what, I guarantee you since Coach Saban's arrival that those young kids that the new soccer coaches go to recruit, they know that they're in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> you know, it's ebb and flow. Things have happened over the years, and, and it's still a very, very good brand. But now what's happened is it's taken off. And, you know, I look at our mayor, what he did during our darkest period during the tornado. Right and the city council, the sport there. I look at uh, what Dr. Robert Witt did, changing the dynamics of that campus, how it looked now with Chancellor Hayes and with, with Dr. Bell. You know, it is a beautiful campus 
<clears throat> and we can't wait to show it off to these kids and their parents and the bands and the cheerleaders. Matter of fact, I would go to say that Dr. Witt back in the day looked at this event, as did Dr. Gouge over there in uh, at Auburn, that it was an opportunity to have eyeballs right. on those campuses. Sure. I'm sure Coach Saban, we know that Coach Saban wanted the event, yeah. and I'm sure that uh, at the time, I think it was Tuberville or, or Chiswick, they wanted the event. But the president saw the bigger picture. It's the band, the cheerleaders, brothers, right. cousins, sisters, right. they're going to come into your community. So, again, we're uh, we're very excited. We've got a, a group of uh, hosts that uh, went down to Montgomery on Saturday morning, left out of there around 6 a.m. out of Tuscaloosa to go and visit with all the teams that made it. Yeah. And I think that they'll do a great job, as will our hotels and our restaurants. So, again, uh, as we prepare for January 1st, uh, for that big announcement that was made yesterday, we've got a little uh, event that we're doing uh, this 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 week. Right, and let's talk about the Super Seven a little bit. We start on Wednesday with Seven A, and as big as as college is in Alabama high school, in a lot of ways has more attendance over the year and everything else. But you got Hoover coming in to play McGill Tulin. Uh, Hoover got by Thompson. The second time, which was a big ball game in itself, very similar to the – in college, you want to compare it to the Auburn-Georgia rematch. Yep. It's very hard to beat Hoover once, much less twice in a year. But they're there, McGill, Tulin, two great teams. And that brings folks from Birmingham down and also from Mobile up. And, and, you know, I'm glad that you had mentioned that, talking about 7A first, because when we first started this process of trying to bring it in to the two campuses, there was one coach that was especially uh, supportive of this event. Uh, when, when we had landed it, Coach Niblett couldn't have been more supportive in talking to the other coaches in that room down in Montgomery right. on qualifying Saturday. Uh, and it, I remember him telling them that it's so important to try to make it for the Hoover team and the other teams an experience. That's right. Yep. And so we're all about trying to create an experience economy but uh, in Tuscaloosa, but the experience itself is important. We had more of the teams that first year stay than we thought we would, and I think that we owe a great deal of gratitude to Coach Niblett for promoting that to those coaches. You know, some of them could make a day trip. That's, that's the way they travel. Right. But this is an opportunity to go to Auburn's campus, go to Tuscaloosa's campus, yeah, right. and show off and let those kids have a good time. So, uh, again, I thank him, and we're thrilled about 7A. Uh, right. You know, it's been hard for me because when we started this, it was a Super 6. That's right. <laughs> and I I'll tell you what, Sarah, Sarah Hegum, who runs the show on this year's event for me, uh, she keeps on reminding me, Co Don, it's seven. It's the Super, Super seven. 7. That's right. So hopefully I won't mess up. Well, the, and also the classifications changed, changed yeah. uh, a couple of days ago, which is, uh, I'll just hit, give you the highlights. Florence and, and Austin moved up to 7A. Yep. Uh, so that's huge in 7A. A couple dropped out. But that game. Then we go into uh, Wednesday is 7 a.m. Then we're going to Thursday and Friday, and we're going to have a high school segment here in just a minute. But big games coming up. I love the way the HSA has done it. They put the uh, even and odd teams on opposite days, and they play the smaller schools in the middle of the afternoon. It gives you the 5A game on Thursday night, the 6A game on, on Friday night. Right. So mm -hmm. it's a great crowd. It helps bring them in. I want to zero in a little bit more on downtown because Absolutely. I know we talk about sports and all, but Downtown Tuscaloosa <laughs> has changed so much. I got to tell you, when I came to your office, uh, last time I was in your office, I was overwhelmed. He was lost. I, 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 <laughs> I mean, find and, no and way my, down my family's from Tuscaloosa <laughs> County, so I know Tuscaloosa very well, but wow, what a downtown. Well, I, let me just tell you this. I left for three and a half years to run down to Foley and right. kind of build my castle in the sand with that sports complex down there and working with the Port Creek Indians. And so when the call came in, would I like to come home, it was uh, a nanosecond before the <laughs> wife and I said yes. Right. So returning, I was just taken back by all the progress that had been made downtown. You know, it's so safe to walk around down there now. Right. I, I attribute the, the, the support of the mayor's mission and the city council and our business community that have done these things to change the look and the feel. And I tell you what, it's not just the University of Alabama campus that is such a beautiful place that is easy to recruit to. Now the city 
we have got the opportunity for businesses, industry. Right. We can show off our community more so now than ever before. Well, it's it's a feel of a whole different town downtown. I mean, it's just like you're walking. Uh, you know, I don't even know how to compare. Like a mall. Yeah. It's like, it's well, like it it's, is uh, kind of a mall. And, a, and an amusement park all together. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's yeah. all tiny. It's a fun place to be. Well, and then if you start taking a look at the arts in the community and, and the music, the entertainment, right. all that coupled together with great restaurants and great stores. I mean, whether it starts with Hudson Pool down at one end with a jeweler, right. or you go to the amphitheater to the other, 301 Bistro. I mean, I could go on and on. There's so many great places to eat down there right. and things to do. And, you know, Friday, just right across the river, when we talk about Tuscaloosa, we talk about a community. Right. Just right across the river is Kentuck. Right. And that Kentuck Art Festival is amazing in itself. So, again, I, I think that the fans are going to really enjoy themselves, and I hope that they'll get a chance to walk around not just the campus right. but our downtown area and visit Midtown. Well, the reason I brought that up is because we know that 100,000 people show up for game day, but there's a lot of time – uh, times during the year that just to come to Tuscaloosa, just to be part that that maybe you know a lot of people may come in, go to the game, and leave. Sometimes they don't understand how great Tuscaloosa's downtown is and what there is to do down there. Well, and I thank you guys for coming to me about the sponsorship of this show because I think that not only this year is is has been great. I just imagine what it's going to be like in the future, and we want to be part of that because you've given us the opportunity to broadcast our message. Right. I would think that John Wild and Ron Anders yeah, and, right. and D. Mark Mitchell down there in Auburn will want to do the same thing to promote their area next year, too. Right. But, you know, it, it is an opportunity that these kids, I'll never forget, seeing those kids coming out of the tunnel to hit the field, right. their eyes bigger than saucers, <laughs> to see... Oh, gosh, I think it was the Piedmont coach. I mean, he didn't – I don't think they were any tears rolling down his eyes, but, man, you could see his eyes were water, misty. Right. He was excited. You know, it is a big deal for both of those communities, Absolutely. for those kids to come out onto those fields. Uh, I'm getting a little chill thinking about it because it was, it was well, my baby back I, I in the day. I will tell you, part of my job with, with Raycom is that yesterday I spent all day – uh, talking to high school coaches about the teams that's going to play. And I'm telling you, I got that same feedback. Two or three of particular single-A and double-A schools said, hey, our kids have never been to a stadium like this. They've never been in a community like this. He said, and we know that that's going to play a part. He said, until the kickoff, he said, they're going to be walking around looking with <laughs> wide eyes, and we know that. But to me, that's just a great tribute to what this event is all about. Amen. Coach Savarese and the, the central board and that staff had a great vision when they decided to uh, institute the two schools, to, to, to buy in Absolutely. and to let us bid on those. And, you know, actually there's other states that have taken the, the model that Alabama oh, put together. I was uh, I did some consulting work for Coach Hinton over there in Mississippi, and mm -hmm. now they've got that event over. And the first time that uh, Mississippi State hosted, I actually was there, and and I didn't have to work the event. <laughs> so I got a chance to experience the full-out meaning of the event over there in Mississippi, and it's the same as Alabama. Right. Those kids just are so happy to be there as well as the coaches. Well, and you mentioned Coach Savaray, Steve Savaray, the executive director of Alabama High School Athletics. Says, what a job he's doing. And I just want to throw that plug out there because he has taken HS. And you, you're right, not just Mississippi. We get calls from Texas. And I like to stand up and say, of course, I work for the NFHS Network, which is the HSAA's television network, also calling games. We get calls from Texas, and I tell you right on the air, hey, what, Alabama high school football will stand up against Texas, California, Michigan, Florida. We got it, and we got the facilities, too, for our Super 7. We're running out of time on this segment, but I want you to touch base just a little bit for the folks that love to go to the beach. You know, you spent three and a half years there. Oa was your baby. I drove by that piece of property uh, not long ago with those parks and out there. I, it's just incredible. I know that's got to be close to your heart as well. It is. It'll always be. It's uh, It's been a whirlwind since I've come back to Tuscaloosa. I haven't had a chance to go back down. I've been in Tuscaloosa now four months, but uh, my friends down there are doing a great job. Uh, I left them a whole bunch of events, and, you know, with Porch Creek coming in and taking that project from the blue-collar folks, what the city of Foley's done, the fact that they're all working together in Baldwin County, right. it is an incredible project, and it's a place for people to go. You know, it's a 
I look at Disney, and, mm -hmm. and everybody's going to go to Disney at least right. once, twice, whatever. But when you start looking in your own black backyard, you've got something Disney-like, right. and they will take care of you down there in that area. So little plug for my friends down there at Foley. Well, you can't, everybody's going to go to the beach, so it's fun to, to know where that is. And, oh, as I've already walked through that park. It's fantastic. And also went through the ball fields and on, which you, you helped do. Okay, Don, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank sir. you so appreciate much, you. I appreciate it, guys. Really you know. Thank you. All right, we'll take a break. We're going to come back. Max, believe it or not, is going to talk some college football. All right, yeah, one or two games one I saw this weekend. One or two small games this yeah. weekend. We'll be right back right here on Game Day TV. Home. It's where you take your time. Build the future. Make your memories. Celebrate. Come home. Alpha Insurance. You can travel all over and you won't find another town with Sundown 10 is the only company in Central Alabama authorized to sell Autobond Super Optics Nanotechnology Window Tent Film. We are the best because we sell the best. With Hooper Optic, you get the first patented nano ceramic window film with three times more infrared rejection. It's 25 times more durable than competing films and 13 degrees cooler. This cutting edge technology provides remarkable performance and cool European styling and you can only get it at Sundown 10 in Hoover. For the best window film installed by the best team, Sundown is the place to go. Welcome back into Game Day TV, everyone. Well, it was great to have Don Staley. He's excited about this event this year. But now let's get over to a little bit of college. We'll come back to high school. Alabama made it in, Max. Well, they did. And did he play? Did he have to play? They said home. That? They're trying to get well, Jerry. Yeah. As opposed to some of the teams we saw needed to be well. That's right. And uh, that we'll get into the SEC championship game. But, I, you know, Alabama looked at it. The committee did it at the university and their body of work. And, you know, he got ahead of Coach Saban. He was very vocal about his position with the team, uh, that they should. They played well enough a, a, along the way. And I know there were some talking about the strength of schedule. Look, Alabama couldn't help playing who they played because we could not help it this year about the Southeastern Conference. It right. was as weak as we've seen it in years. But needless to say, we talked about that during the year, that there were going to be a purging. And there have been – I have my hat over here. and we, right. de we demolished some teams along the way, and I think it must have worked. But right. the fact is that Alabama's in at number four. I think they got the best draw. They'll play Clemson. That'll be a rematch from last year. Someone asked me this morning, uh, coming in, uh, I was on the phone with some guys, and we talked a little bit about that, Jerry. What does Alabama do right now in, prepare, uh, in preparing for Clemson? I can tell you one thing they do. They watch the last play a hundred times because the pick play that they got beat on should have never happened, first of all. They have corrected that, and I think that's where they'll start. But the fact is Alabama – and Clemson do play in the Sugar Bowl. That will be almost a home field advantage for Alabama. All right, Kirby Smart redoes his team, gets ready for Auburn, yeah. comes in. It's just basically like watching two separate teams it, it was. from the first game. Yeah, Kirby had them ready. Give him, give I him give credit. him credit for that. And I didn't think so. I thought Auburn, but I, here's the thing that I didn't, and maybe I've been away from that level for a long time, Jerry. That, but Auburn was beat up. I mean, there was right. no evidence. That, you know, they played Carrion Johnson. He was shoulder was bad. He fumbled. Uh, and I really think that had a, a lot to do with the turning aspect of the game. But as you said, take nothing away from Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs. They came to play. They wanted to play. They weren't intimidated this time. Right. Uh, and I thought that might happen a little bit as bad as Auburn beat them the first go round. But it didn't happen. And hats off to Georgia. They in there. But I'll say this for them: they drew a monster uh, in the playoff. I'm telling you, if I, I'll just listen, where are we now? We got another couple of weeks here. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say Georgia will have to score 40 or more to beat Oklahoma. And I hadn't seen them score 40 this year yet. So I think they're, they've got their work cut. They'll do to compete with Oklahoma. 
they'll have to do by far their best coaching job. All right, let's 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 talk a little bit more about Auburn, Georgia, and the fact that Auburn comes in. It's hard to beat the same team twice. Everybody says that in the same year. Yeah. Uh, Johnson, injured shoulder. They had hurt. I, we knew he was hurt. Um, so, it uh, in Georgia's territory, whether they the want dome. to say it was a home yeah. or not, it was at the Dome. They're right. They knock off the number one team two weeks in a row, basically. Sure. Then it's almost impossible. They were almost in an impossible situation. They were. I, I would say this: had Johnson been a hundred percent healthy, and had Petway been back to Petway. two running game, uh, two running backs in that game, right. the score would not have been the same. I'm not saying Auburn would have won it, but I'll say this. Georgia would have been faced with a lot more physicality from the running backs than they saw. We remember what Johnson did to him to begin with. I mean, he had 102 yards and 30 carries, but the fact is he ran over and around him. He couldn't do that in this last game. And right. they didn't have anybody else that could do it. The right. Martin kid is too little by, by Coach Malzahn's own admission. Uh, he was hire, uh, hired on. He, they hired him on right. to be a running back as a backup. He's a wide receiver. He's five foot ten and 190 pounds. I hate to say this, but at that level in this league, you can't carry the ball very long because right. somebody the 280 pounders go hurt you. And I think that's what happened. But need to say it is what it is. Georgia won the game. They got Oklahoma to play. Auburn's at home. They got to the SEC championship game. They beat two number ones back to back. And Coach Malzahn got a nice new contract, and I'm proud for him. All right, let's move up to Clemson. Well, big I tell ball you, game up there. Yeah, up I watched there. that one against Miami. Uh, the other night, and they they won. They had them thirty-eight to three in the last four or five minutes, and Mark and Mark Rick's team at Miami was able to kick a field goal and make it thirty-eight to three the final. But uh, it was total domination by Clemson. Now Clemson has gotten better. They lose to Syracuse early in the year. They didn't play well against NC State. They had some faults along the way. They lost to Sean Watson this past year. The All-American quarterback. He was their go-to guy. This key, this year, Brian Kelly is a guy that has done a really, really good job filling in, and I want to say that as he started, but he's a starting quarterback now. And I, you know, and I got to look at Dabo Sweeney, and he he called the meeting and and really called Kelly off to the side and says, "Look, you you are not Deshaun Watson. You be Kelly. You know, you be Brian Kelly. You do mm-hmm. what you have to do uh, right. to win the football." And he's improved every week. Clemson is going to be a good football team. Uh, they wouldn't be there if they weren't. Jerry, but I'll tell you, they are not as good as they were last year. Alabama, I think, wins that ball game in the opening ball game in the Sugar Bowl. You think? Kind of, well, before we get to that, let's talk about Ohio State, and Wisconsin. That ball game, <laughs> I mean, people were glued to that, and they quite were. possibly that's what got Alabama in. There. Well, it was, and I think I think it wasn't so much that Ohio State won, and it was in one way. But Ohio State did not look good. Jerry. They right. they could not pass the eye test. You right. know that they, they sit there and watch. And here was Wisconsin in that game, undefeated, favored all the way in that ball game, and they didn't. Look too good either. Right. So I, you know, I don't. To me, it was not a big decision for the committee, particularly if they they looked at the strength of schedule and they looked at the two losses that Ohio State had. You can't lose to an unranked team and get beat by thirty-one points. I mean, that would. And I think also the committee looked at last year. They they did the same thing to Ohio State last year that they did this year to Alabama. They slid them in without winning a conference championship, and they got beat. What Clemson beat them like fifty-nine to nothing or something like that. Right. So they didn't want that. On the, the blemish on their record. So, I, you know, they played well enough. Urban Meyer's done a remarkable job uh, at Ohio State, but you can't lose two and lose to an un, unranked team by 31 points and get into a championship round. All right, Oklahoma. Uh, that, that, they're the best team in the league right now, in my opinion. They, in, they, in the country, you think? Yeah, yeah, I think no doubt they are. Wow. They, they have no – I'm telling you, I want to see – they played the number one defense in the, in the Big 12, and they didn't even punt to the third quarter. Every time they touched the ball, they scored. I mean, it was like it was a, it was a, a, a work of art, uh, the way Baker Mayfield moved that football team. And here's the difference in Mayfield with the Oklahoma Sooners and other teams: he can score by himself. He can throw the short out. He can throw the deep ball, or he can throw on the run. He's 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 going to win the Heisman. I, I, nobody else out there right. that's even close to him as far as his performance. Now I know he's had some. Couple of personal problems off the field. Right. I understand that, right. but the fact is, that's you know that's another category you vote on. But if you vote on skill and performance, Mayfield is the guy. And remember this too: he didn't come to Oklahoma out of high school. He's a transfer student. He transferred from Texas Tech to go there just to get a chance. Why? He could have come out last year and gone to the NFL. He said, "I can come back. We win a national championship." Remember, Bob Stoops didn't resign till July of this year. 
they the new coach stepped in, who was the offensive coordinator at 33 years old now right. in this team, and he is doing a remarkable job. And I, you know, you got to get it. Some years everything works right for you. You know, there's some years that things are going to go bad. You got to overcome problems. Oklahoma's just had it. I don't want to say handed to them, right. but Jerry's as close to handed to them as they can get. The ball bounced the right way every time. Absolutely, they did it. They did it right. And I know uh, Barry Switzer's going to be on a local radio show coming up this week. And for those of you who don't know, Barry's still very active involved with the Oklahoma program. Right. Uh, some people don't like that, but he is, and he's very knowledgeable. He said Oklahoma, without a doubt, he's looked at Georgia and he's looked at Oklahoma. He said Oklahoma will score 30 to 35. Uh, before Georgia gets off the bus, Barry's got so, a vitamin company or something too. Yeah, he's got nutrition. He's got his thing in, in a half a dozen things. Right. I can promise you. And on top of that, when he shows up on a TV program out there, right. they pay him anywhere from five to ten thousand just to show up. He, he needs a sidekick. <laughs> I've I'll already off makeup. The, I've already offered to drive him around. Right. Well, you be the get back coach. <laughs> yeah. I'll, coach, I'll be the driver. All right. Well, let's let's go back to now Alabama and Clemson. That's yeah. going to be a matchup. One of the favorite things, so to speak, is this is Alabama's second home. A lot of people yeah. think down in New Orleans, no, and then if they win, they get to come back to Atlanta too. So well, they won more games right. in Atlanta. Not than like the they're going out to, that's right, that's right, <laughs> out to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, it is. And that, see, now that's another. Thing. Georgia's got to go. Remember, they they've got to go play Oklahoma in in the Rose Bowl. Here's the thing right. that's going to play into this, and we and just to throw this in as well, and having worked with college teams for a long time, Jerry. Flying them across country is one thing. But when you take when you take them to, to a, a completely new environment, and this is a it, California's a different mindset. We know right, that. Right. In fact, I'm surprised they hadn't fallen in the Pacific Ocean right. yet. But it is one right. day. The fact is 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 the Georgia fans and and so much the fans but the players, they get out there in the Rose Bowl. That's one of the most historic places in in America to play. Right. They're gonna be looking around and I just I I'm afraid that the high that they had against Auburn will be, almost result in that big a low out there. And I know Kirby will work hard, but you can't overcome a 3,000-mile trip with a bunch of young 18-, 19-year-olds that had never been out of their backyard, basically. And I think that's another point. And, and then, on top of that, they're going to play the best team in the, comp, in the league right now. So right. I think that I, I, I'd be really anxious to see that game. Uh, I hope Georgia can represent the Southeastern Conference, but I think if there's a weak link in the four teams out there, Georgia takes that, gets that tag because not the fact that they won the SEC, but the fact of who they have to play and where they have to go to play. Right. And plus, you know, you look at the SEC championship, even though they handled Auburn, that's a hard game. Oh, it is. They're coming off of a much harder game. And of course, to Alabama's advantage, losing to Auburn now is an advantage because yeah. they got the week off, got everybody healed up. Well, they already they get the draw yeah. perfect, yeah. just like and they they're like. not even going back on the practice field to the fifteenth. Right. See, remember these two games are oh, January first, right? So they got some time to heal up and all that. But I, I'm the thing that I don't think you can heal is the psychological edge, mm -hmm. and that's what Alabama's played on for a long time. And teams that have to play teams like that, and again, then the venue where you play the game, that's what to me it plays right in Alabama. Alabama's hands, not only for New Orleans, but if they can win that one, I think they do win that one, then I think they get a chance to go to Atlanta. Coach, give us a little insight. When you take a team like Georgia to the Rose Bowl, you fly out there several – first of all, you got the time change. Yep. And for those of us that travel, just had to spend a night or two in a hotel room, yeah. you always know the first night you're there, you don't sleep that exactly well. The right. pillow's not like you like it. The, somebody next door's banging on the wall or so. I mean, it's always that kind of thing. So you get them out there early, but – if you were taking Georgia, how, how many days early? How do you set uh, so that here, up? Here's something that's even worse because of the, the, the host committees that invite you out there. They have activities planned for you every hour of the day. Right. Every day, every hour that you're not on the field, there's – there's a group that goes to lunch with somebody, with the mayor, or somebody you go sightseeing, or you go to the hospital and visit some of the infirmed. Right. There's all things that there's, are distractions. It's not like going to a motel or hotel the night before a game. You have your meetings and you get the kids ready. You right. take them back to the stadium, you kick it off and play. That, go to a game like that. I was, boy, I've been. In my career, I was in the, at the Sugar Bowl twice. I was at the Fiesta Bowl in Phoenix. I've been to some pretty big ball games. It is a nightmare for coaches to control that. Again, it becomes a psychological edge because you're distracted, and other than just the physical part. A lot of activity going on. 
that's a great reward for them to get there. Mm -hmm. It does nothing for their performance on the field as to why they got there. Right. Both teams have to go through that, though. Yes, but Georgia do. traveling a little further, it will make a difference. Yes, I don't think there's any doubt. And I think Georgia haven't, have not having been there in so many years. Remember, they hadn't played for a national championship since 1980. Right. I mean, that's been a long time. Oklahoma's kind of had a chance to be there and been close around. And I don't know. I just have a, I have a different feel. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Could very well be. I, for Kirby Smart's uh, sake and for the SEC sake, I'd love to see, you know, a Georgia-Alabama right. game matchup. Right. And guess where I'm going there. Right. <laughs> One advantage that I would say is Dabo Sweeney and Nick Saban both have been through this yeah, before. they have. Whereas Kirby Smart, being a new head coach, hasn't. He's on a learning curve as well, having to travel out there. But that's one thing when you get into New Orleans there. Don't worry about Dabo Sweeney. He's going to have his team. He knows how to bring Absolutely. them in. Absolutely. And you, you make a mention, Kirby's been there as an assistant coach. Let right. me quickly tell you the difference. As an assistant coach, they hand you an itinerary, and 90% of the time you're controlling your guys right. like he controlled the defensive side of the ball. Now, as a head coach, not only does he have to be informed about everything going on, but he's the one that has to go speak to the banquets and to the lunches while he's out there to represent the Southeastern Conference. Completely distraction. So I, there, there's a lot of things underneath and in behind the scenes that the average fan has no clue. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk some high school. It's Super 7 week. I'll break that down for you as well as in the last segment, Max and I will talk about some college uh, coaching changes around the country as well. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more right here on Game Day TV. How do you show love? With the big things? The little things? The tough things? Your everything. Show them you care. Alpha Insurance. You can travel all over and you won't find another town with our name or our frame of mind. So much to do, so much to see. It comes down to this, it's easy to see. There's just one in the world positively. Tuscaloosa! The one and only. Sportsmanship is the educational component um, derived from athletic contests. And sportsmanship enhances the character of student athletes because of the impact of the leaders of each sports team. Those leaders help develop the character of those student athletes to be displayed in times of adversity. A lot of things dripping here in the studio, coffee, noses, everything. Hey, welcome back into Game Day TV, everyone. Let's talk about some high school sports. Max, you and I have both been Ooh. really involved in high school this year. You've been on Raycom doing the thing, and, and you're a uh, color analyst. I'll get it right in a minute. Doing your thing is the best way. It's been a great year so far. It really has. I, you know, this past week we were in Wetumpka, and you'd already seen Wetumpka play. And yes. You told me a little bit about the kid. I was absolutely blown away. I tried to go in. One of them's a junior. I tried to go down and get a package deal. Go ahead and sign both of them. Right. I mean, both of the run, the running back and the and the quarterback in that situation was just overwhelming. Uh, they took on Hillcrest Tuscaloosa, and uh, to say it was a mismatch, it was kind of a mismatch. Played very well close up to the, the right. fourth quarter. But uh, when you got talent, Jerry, you see it every week. When you got talent and one team is overloaded with as opposed to the other, the team with talent's going to win every time. All right. Well, you know, our second show of the season, I talked about Wetumpka. Uh, his last name is Smoke. And uh, Cavorcier. Thank you. Cavorcier uh -huh. Smoke. I, I 
Sid the thing there was a guy out in the parking lot trying to get his charcoals <laughs> yeah. going and he, went, and he was fanning it and, and smoke ran for a touchdown enough breeze off of there it just flamed right up but he's a good ball player Jerry they were, they were backed up on the on two yard line this is in the fourth quarter and they just turn, trying to get the ball out for the, so the punter could punch what it amount right. to he broke one with 98 yards I'm telling and this you got to understand this kid's not 150 pounds this kid is 220 pounds and he's 6 foot 1 runs better than 4 or 5 and I'm telling you, when he went by, as, as he passed the 50, there were people f- chasing him. He just went away from them. Uh, he's got 28 scholarship offers already. He's waiting on one that it appears is on the way, and that's where he's going, and probably he's going to be an Auburn Tiger. All right. Well, there, Wetumpka is going to play Pinson Valley, and that's the game that I yes. call. Uh, Pinson Valley and Clay Chalkville. Now, for those of you who keep up with high school football in the state of Alabama, you know that Clay Chalkville and Pinson Valley, just a few miles from each other, it's been a rivalry. The fact that this game was for basically all the marbles to get to go to Bryant-Denny made it even greater. Let me tell you this. Bo Nix is everything he's advertised to be and then some. Now, he he puts the ball there. They may not catch it every time. Yeah. I, I think looking at him in – in college, he's going to be able to put it there. You got those great SEC receivers that can bring it down, be even greater. I compare him. Everybody's asked me, "Well, you've seen Bo Nix, uh, you've seen Tonga Valoa. Yeah. Which one's better?" I, I couldn't tell you, but they're both two great high school quarterbacks, along with you, the young man at Wetumpka. But let me ask you this, right quick: How good is their defense? Defense was good enough to, uh, and I think you know everybody Friday night coming back in the in from the game. Yeah. My phone's ringing off the hook. That's the same question. They want to know if Pinson Valley's defense is good enough to stop the quarterback exactly and smoke. Right. You know what? We're going to find out Friday night, 7 o'clock at Bryant Dick. That's all I J. can tell J.D. Martin's a quarterback at Wetumpka, guys. Right. And for those of you, for those that follow college football, he's compared to Lamar Jackson. In fact, he's committed to Louisville uh, as compared to, to other eight or ten offers he's got. But he's a junior. Right. He's got another year. And he's a 6'190 pounder that I'm telling you. Still growing. Uh, absolutely. And, here's, and i got to throw this one point in and we'll move on. I've, I've been around this game a long time. And rarely I've seen fake kicks. I've seen all kind of trick plays and the trickeration factor plays a lot of roles. I've never seen a kid at any level run a fake punt out of his own end zone mm-hmm. for 100 yards and score. This kid took the fake uh, yeah, didn't just get the first down. He went the no, whole he, distance. he just took the ball and tucked it and went around the right. And just, I'm talking about, walked off and left everybody. A real prospect in those two kids right there, Jerry. We'll see if Pinson Valley's defense can that's stop the, him. That's going to be the key, I think, to that game. Let's back up one division now. Let's go to 7A. It's been set for a while. Yeah. McGill Tulin, you've seen them play. Yeah. Uh, they're playing Hoover. We've all seen Hoover play. Uh, we just heard a great compliment on Josh Niblett, how much influence he had on getting the games, the Super 7 moved out of Legion Field, back and forth. He'll have that team ready. I've said all year for the last three years, I've said the road to the state championship goes through Hoover. It almost didn't this year, but it still does. Well, th- with three losses, you'd think, well, you know, maybe they're down. Remember, right. I, you know, I saw the game, and you've seen them play. I was on the field, and Jerry, they're like a small college team. Yeah, you know, we talk about all the great quarterbacks. Here's a kid, the quarterback at Hoover, never gets mentioned. This kid could play linebacker. Right. He's 6'1", 220, and can fly. I mean, you know, that, it just tells me the quality level. And we also know that Coach Niblett starts in the summer playing for the championship in December. That's Absolutely. what he works for. And that's what they've done this year. So, that three losses, and I think it's going to be an outstanding ball game between them and Magoo. Let me just Magoo tell Taylor. you, the Super 7, of course, we had Don Staley on earlier, and we know that you know the Super 7. I want to tell you this. If you've never been to a Super 7 event, this is quite possibly the time to go. I mean, no it's doubt. in Tuscaloosa this year, uh, and I'm going to give you the times and the rundowns. So we start on Wednesday at 7 o'clock at night. Wednesday game will be McGill Tulin, who is 13-0, and coached by Ernest Hill. His son, Brian, and we'll tell you more about that in just a minute, will be there with uh, playing Hoover at 7 o'clock. Going to Wednesday, the game start at 11 in the morning. Your first game is a 3A game, Hillcrest Evergreen. 
13 and 1 on the year. We'll play Randolph County, who is 13 and 1. That's the 11 o'clock game. They'll take a short break. Teams will come out. At 3 o'clock, you got the 1 8. Sweetwater, 13 and 1, kicks off against Pickens County, who is 12 and 2 at 3 o'clock. Let me just throw this in for Sweetwater. They beat Maplesville. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I get excited about all high school levels of football, levels of football in high school. Maplesville is hard to beat. They've lost two games in like 30 years. 30, yeah. 30, 30, uh, 30 so, ball games. Right, That's right. right. So, you know, for Sweetwater to do that, you got to give the nod to Sweetwater. But Pickens County has been sitting out there very quiet this year, but they made it in there. That's going to be a great ball game. Before you go, let me just yes, say, sir. I interviewed the Pickens County coach yesterday, yes, last sir. night. And we point blank asked him, I said, well, you know, you, you had a great year. Uh, you went to play Maplefield last year. Now you got Sweetwater. Would you rather play Maplefield again? He said, I refuse to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> that was the coolest answer I got from any of the coaches yesterday, right, Jerry. Right. Well, that's, that's how, it, how entrenched it, 1A football is. is. All right. And then 5A game will be at 7 o'clock on Thursday night. That's St. Paul's as they come up out of the Mobile area to play an undefeated Briarwood Christian uh, led by Fred Yancey. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story because i got just a second to tell you. You're talking about that uh, fake punt. Yeah. Fred Yancey was playing Chelsea one year, and at that time, that was the biggest rivalry. They had the ball on the 30-yard line, fourth down and one. They go up to the line, try to draw the team outside to get the first down. They can't do it. Fred calls timeout. Let me back up. He does not call timeout. He takes the five-yard penalty, all right, instead of calling timeout. Well, that backed him up, made it fourth and six from the 35-yard line. What does he do? He fakes the punt. Everybody <laughs> thought he was backing the no, ball up to, to give him an it. extra five yards to right. punt it. No, sir. He was setting the Chelsea coach up the whole time with a fake punt. He figured, well, if I can get it on fourth and one, I can get it on fourth and six. And it worked. Tim Castile, by the way, I think is the one that, that – uh, ran that around the right end. I'm telling you guys, that's coaching. That's, yeah, coaching. that's coaching. And that's the kind of level coach. And I say all the time, there's a lot of high school coaches in the state of Alabama that are really college coaches. They just happen to be coaching in high school. Fred Yancey is one of those. You don't want to miss that game 5 o'clock. All right, Friday, 4A four, uh, game at 11 o'clock will be UMS Wright, another team out of Mobile, a traditional powerhouse there, <laughs> playing Fayette County. Both of those teams are 12-2 and two coming into that game. I know you talked to them, too. I talked to Terry, Terry Curtis yesterday. He's the head coach he, of UMS, right? Been there. He's been coaching 45 years. He's been the head coach there 18 years. And this is, So I'm asking him the question about his team. You know, we need right. to get a little background. I've not seen him play this year. And he said, well, I'm going to tell you about my team. He said, my offensive line, he says, not only are they little, but they make up for it because they're slow. <laughs> so, and we laughed. I mean, it was it was like old home week for he and I. I right. We've crossed paths occasionally. But right. the fact is, that's the caliber of guys that are coaching at this level. Right. He can laugh and joke and cut up. But when it comes to game time, he's got four ex-head coaches as assistants on his staff. That program right there will be one to deal to be dealt with. And they're with. smart enough not to give them any locker room bulletin Absolutely board Absolutely, you're right. It's all right. It's funny. <laughs> right. I mean, it really yeah, is funny. We're too. slow and, and all that. <laughs> yeah. We're small. But, hey, we're at – He's got six state champions. Uh, that's right. Chips that's on right. His wall. All right. That's the 11 o'clock game. Move on to the 3 o'clock game. Uh, you got Leroy in 2A. They're 12 and 2. They're playing Lynette at 14 and 0. Now, Lynette is one of those schools that's kind of over on the Georgia line. They don't get much press, you know, mainstream through Very Alabama. True. But look at them. They're yeah. 14 and 0. Right. Uh, Fife the was the defending champion. Everybody thought that they would, would beat Leroy, uh, uh, beat and come in and set up that rematch. That didn't happen. You're right. But Leroy out of South Alabama, good uh, ball team. Uh, grandson of Carol Ellington, a friend of mine down in Bruton, plays on there. She'll be at that ball game too. 6A, we discuss that. We Tumpka play in Pennsylvania. Valley. We Tumpka 13 and 1, and Pennsylvania Valley 14 and 0. That's a 7 o'clock game on the, Friday. The one loss from We Tumpka was to Opelika by one point. Right. Uh, and, and so I'm telling you guys, that's uh, that'll be a, that game right there. I know why you want to go see that one. Right. That's a big one. All right. And as a side note for this Super 7, you know, Max, rarely, and we've talked about this all year too, you've got uh, quarterbacks who are famous coaches or famous players' sons, okay? Yes. Well, we've talked about Tunga Valoa at, yeah. at Alabama. Everybody knows he's the younger brother of the Tunga Valoa quarterback at Alabama. Uh, Jay Barker's son is a quarterback at 
at Spain Park, and that's gotten a lot of press. But this is a unique Super 7 in the fact that there are five head coaches that have their sons on the team this year, yeah. Karen, Amanda, Bryant, Denny. Let me just give you, uh, Pat uh, Prestige as a head coach at Randolph County. Uh, his son, Andrew, is the wide receiver and the kicker for that team. So he also plays quarterback. And plays quarterback. I went interviewed so, him last night that's as right. well. Yes. So when they walk into Bryant Denny, can you imagine your father and your son <laughs> being able to be at state? I mean, what a great thing. Same thing with Josh Niblett at Hoover. His son, Shaw, plays on that team, and they get to walk in together. We've already beat up Patrick Nix and Bo Nix enough. Everybody knows Patrick Nix because he came in for Stan White through the touchdown pass against Alabama a few years ago to win. That made him famous, and he's been coaching in the NFL and all. But now his son, Bo, they get to walk through that uh to the opening out of the locker room together. In 2A, Clifford Story, the head coach at uh, Lynette, his son Kristen plays for him. And then McGill Tool and Ernest Hill, you love Ernest Hill. He's a great guy. His son, Brian, the running back. And to be honest with you, his son's the reason that Oh, he's no there. doubt about that. Remember that with McGill Tool's situation? They lost – they lost uh, 31 players a year before, right. and now they're back in it again. Right. So, and Ernest uh, Hill's the new head coach. So right. that's just some side stories. So Max will be broadcasting uh, several of the games from Bryant Denny on Raycom. You can watch it there all weekend long. But I'm going to tell you, folks, you need to make the trip to Tuscaloosa. We'll take a short break. We're going to come back, wrap up some coaching changes. Max, you got some what's for supper? I hope. Hi, absolutely, my all favorite right. of yours, right. ribeye we'll steaks. Right. Right. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Right here on Game Day TV. The unexpected. The inevitable. The inconvenient. Life can be difficult. Make it a little easier. Alpha Insurance. You can travel all over and you won't find Another town with our name or our frame of mind So much to do, so much to see It comes down to this, it's easy to see There's just one in the world positively Tuscaloosa, the one and only Make your vehicle a rolling billboard or a one-of-a-kind by changing the entire color by adding a high-quality vehicle wrap. Sundown Vehicle Wraps is the premier vehicle wrap company in Central Alabama. Our extensive knowledge makes us the leader in vehicle advertising. Whether you're a small business looking to increase revenue or a stabilized company looking for guaranteed visibility for your company, from design to installation, our team delivers with innovative graphics that are guaranteed to turn heads at an affordable price. Visit us on the web to start your next vehicle wrap project. I never in a million years thought that I would ever have to utilize a Ronald McDonald house. It meant the world that I was able to stay so close to her. And she was never alone. Thank you from the Chepkowskis family. This week, we started off with a super moon just in time for Super 7 Week in Alabama. What a cool coincidence. Hope you guys had a chance to see how bright and beautiful the moon was Sunday night. It was a sight to behold. We are expecting over 75,000 fans to travel to Tuscaloosa to watch the Super 7 and hopefully see their favorite team shine bright just like the Super Moon did. Tuesday will bring us lots of rain and a cold front, so drag your jackets back out if you're headed to Bryant Denny Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Here's your forecast for the Super 7 games. Wednesday will be cold and breezy with a high of 49 and a low of 33. And thankfully, no chance of rain. Thursday, we'll have cloudy skies with cool weather. The high will be 54 and a low of 29. It's going to be cold, you guys. We'll have a 10% chance of rain that day. For the games on Friday, the cold weather sticks around with a high of 51 and a low of 30. Partly to mostly cloudy with no rainfall expected. Cold weather or not, I'm sure your team, if they're still in the playoffs, you'll just bundle up, be excited to cheer them on, and have a good time. That's it for Game Day TV weather. I'm Kim Scherer, wishing all the teams the best of luck this week.
Be sure to go to Facebook so you can like and follow our weather segment sponsors, Alabaster Living and Helena Living. See you later, guys. Thanks for joining us this week on Game Day TV. By the way, if you'd like to watch our show on Facebook, if you're watching on Charter uh, Cable Channel 80 throughout the week and you'd like to watch it when you want to, so to speak, you can do it on Facebook at Ask Game Day TV. Just hit the like button. We got a lot of likes up in Pinson Valley this this week when I went up there, I did a little show in the stands and made some folks famous, so they all on about go there and you can watch that little video. And let me tell you this before we get off into this, Max. You know, we're gonna shut our show down here for the season after next week. This is our next to last game day TV for this year. But we're gonna do stuff on Facebook throughout the year. Yes. So I'll just tell you, if you're watching on TV, you'd like to keep up with with recruiting or with signing day and uh, in high school, all the state championship events that we'll be involved in throughout the year until next football season, you want to make sure you like us on Ask Game Day TV on Facebook. If there's a big event in high school or college sports in the state of Alabama, right. we'll be there. We're going we're gonna to cover it so yep. you can watch us there. All right, coaching changes. Florida Ooh. State, my goodness oh, gracious, man. did you expect that? No, let me just tell you, i, I got to say this to you. You know, even as long as I stayed on the field, I got out too early. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. If you hit it, when you get it, after you've had a, a number of years' experience, uh, the the financial, the monetary value becomes uh, more important to you. And Jimbo Fisher walked away from Tallahassee, won one national championship, played for another. Uh, they had some pretty bad situations this year. They lost a quarterback. The, the season ended up as a 6-6 six and six season. And, and I think he had some internal problems. It was very evident. But he goes, he catches a plane yesterday out, out to College Station, and they welcome him out there. He's already showed him his new house, and he's already got Christmas trees up there. I mean, everything was just great. Band was there. But here's the key. He got a 10-year contract for $75 million. Jerry, that's more than Coach Saban makes. That's more than, he, that's more than Harbaugh makes it, it in Michigan. They just they got a raise. That's they, what they yeah, got. They did. See, <laughs> my point is, I'm, you. Th th that's my thinking. Right. Every coach out there, Coach Malzahn, uh, if, if Mike Norvell goes to Arkansas or wherever you are, you need to send Jimbo Fisher a, a happy Thanks. I mean, excuse me, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas note, and a thank you note That's right. and for the buy raise. Dinner. And you're absolutely right. So, anyway, uh, hats off to him. I think he'll do a good job. The big question now is who goes to Florida State? Charlie right. Strong's name's involved, heavily involved because he coached in Florida. Never been at Florida State. He was at the University of Florida, but he's at South Florida now. They ended up winning 10 this year with him. So, I think he'll be a candidate. But Odell Haggins, a kid that we had when I was on the staff there, has been an assistant there the whole time. He's making a strong push. He's a defensive lineman. He'll push defense big time there. But he's a really knowledgeable guy, and uh, he may have a chance for that job. All right, so we, we uh, welcome in a, a, a good coach into the SEC. That's going to change it up a little bit out there in Texas. Yeah. Can't go to what's for supper till we talk about Tennessee. What in the world Man, is I, going you know, on? Nobody knows that. You're talking about we, we throw the word dumpster fire around. <laughs> wow. I think it's already spread. It's more than that. <laughs> coach Former ends up, Phil Former ends up as athletic director. Uh, after John Curry just absolutely – uh, he had a catastrophic exit. Uh, you know, they thought they had Mike Leach signed and the president got involved. And I think they're – you know, Jerry, you've seen this happen. Too many too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Too right. many guys want to make decisions up there. If, if Coach Fulmer can get it straightened out, so be it. I hope he can. Right now, they don't have a coach. Uh, they don't they, – they, I think Les Miles has been talked to. Don't know that any offers come about. But, you know, is he the right guy? Hey, for $7 million a year, I can get you Max Howell. Just call me, okay? <laughs> it's just that simple. The agent, you'll get you, your You cook. go to Tennessee for In $7 million. In a heartbeat. Million. Right. The car's running out there. All now. Right. Uh, yeah. Auburn, of course, Gus Miles on yeah. signs. Okay, Max. Going to cook. Going to cook a little what's for supper tonight? Man, let me tell you something, Jerry. This is, you know, we worked hard all year long. I know. And, and I know one of your favorite meals is a good thick ribeye steak. <laughs> you know that. And I'm going to marinate. I always like to take mine out. I don't cook it at room temperature, same as you. Right. And I marinate. I like kind of a teriyaki, Worcestershire, garlic, black pepper. A little kinda, melted butter yeah, on there yeah, to hold and, it and all I, together. And I like that. And I like for it to sit a couple hours right. outside on that. And I'm going to throw it on the grill. I'm going to turn that grill up probably to about... Uh, 375, 400, and I'm going to sear it on both sides. Then I'm going to turn that grill down just a little. Now, I don't know how most people like theirs, but when I cut into mine, I want to see something pink. I want to see like it's a red mm -hmm. piece of meat. I well, I can do it. that. You and I do that Knock the before. horns off of it That's for me. Right. 
But the fact is, is I don't like a, a well done piece of steak. I just right. it, it's too tough for me. But the key to it, as you know, is to baste it when you turn it so that it doesn't dry. You That's know, right. I like it moist and, and that. And I'm gonna have a, about an inch thick cut ribeye, and I'm gonna have a special cut for us. Right. Under that, I'm gonna have a loaded baked potato. We're gonna do tradition. We're gonna do sour cream and chives, and you know, I like a little cheese in mine as well. Okay. A little black pepper to do that. I, I, I love a house salad. Uh, because I'm going to use a homemade blue cheese dressing on my house salad. Uh, that'll, and for my bread, I'm going to do a Texas toast, right. a garlic bread on the on top in a fryer. I'm going to douse it really juicy, flip it over, and I'm going to have garlic bread with it. None of that matters without dessert. I know. A big old pitcher of sweet iced tea to uh, wash all that okay. down. Then my favorite. Yes, sir. Banana pudding. Okay. You know it's going to be a banana pudding. I don't like a lot of vanilla wafers. It's it's called banana pudding for a reason. Banana and pudding. And I call it nanner I, myself. And, and, I love, and here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to pull that out, and I'm going to sprinkle a handful of pecans. Right, that's on enough. Top. Hey, <laughs> folks, listen. You want to follow us on Facebook, Ask Game Day TV. We'd appreciate it. Our show next week is going to feature our Game Day chef, Marty Staples, again. We're going to have him on with his recipes. That's where his recipes are, by the way, on Facebook. Thanks for watching. For Max Howell, I'm Jerry Young. We'll see you next week right here on Game Day TV.